Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Secretary of State shakeup. President Trump stunning Washington lawmakers with a major cabinet change. Rex Tillerson is out. Plus, connected crimes. Why investigators believe a break-in at a liquor store this morning and the theft of police uniforms last week are now connected. Han Brandon watching over what looks like we could be in for a little snow this afternoon. And take a look. It looks like a very gloomy view from our Windsor Skycam that is sitting over us, kind of watching over the downtown skyline. But it's this. I'm having a deja vu from yesterday. <laughs> it's the snowstorm that's on the way that actually the timing looks like it could really maybe follow up the evening drive. Evening drive will be in jeopardy for some snow bursts that we need to watch out. We saw a little of that yesterday, but Rhonda, the weather service has issued a winter weather advisory for our friends and family up in Sanilac and St. Clair counties. And this goes from now until 8 p.m. for the potential of two to four or maybe five inches in a few spots. So we do see a couple of heavier snow bands to the north. Most of us are seeing some light snow and flurries, but notice some of these darker blues right on the shoreline moving into Lexington and then uh, headed down toward Port Huron here into parts of maybe Marine City gets some of these squalls, but we all later in the afternoon will see the chance for more heavy snow bursts or squalls which are very, very dangerous. Temps right now in the upper 20s to low 30s and the winds out of the northwest anywhere between 10 to 20 miles an hour. Temps don't grow a whole lot, but our snow burst chances do, especially after three o'clock. And we will see slippery roads and low visibility advising around everybody to watch out on bridges, ramps and overpasses. All right, Brandon, we've been warned. Meanwhile, developing this noon, police are trying to determine whether a smash and grab robbery on the city's west side this morning could be tied to several other crimes across the city in the past week. The method that these thieves are using to break into the store matches similar robberies from last week, all because of a van smashing into these businesses. And that's not the only link. Let's get to Nick Monticelli. He joins us as police look into a connection with the van itself. Good afternoon to you. This one happened early this morning. Someone driving a van right through the front of the store. As you can see now, there are the store owner, his sons and others helping out to try to clean this mess up. It is quite the mess. There was a steel door in front of this uh, liquor store, which is right at the corner of Larchmont and Tyreman here on Detroit's west side. Now, the problem is that the owner says this is happening over and over and over again. That is why you've got the steel door, because he didn't want this happening again. In fact, he says this happened so many times, he's trying to sell this place. There's uh, 20, 30 breakers in here. Every year, every other year, there's only break in here. I'm tired of it. I shall sell my store. Nobody wants to buy it. I'm, I'm, you know, they're all scared to come to the city. They're all, they're, all, they're all scared just even to work in the city. Now, again, the guys are trying to clean this up, but this is just one portion of the story. You see the van that was used in this smash and grab is the same van that was used last week in the incident that was stolen from a dry cleaners that was filled with police uniforms from the Novi and Farmington Hills Police Departments. There have been a rash of these things in the past several weeks. Several of these break-ins were something a van or other vehicle driving right in the building and taking off. If you know anything, please call the Detroit Police Department or Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. On Detroit's west side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. And hopefully they track down who's responsible, Nick. You certainly fear for those business owners. A major White House shakeup as President Trump ousts Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and plans to move CIA Director Mike Pompeo into his place. Now, this sudden shift in this position, the fourth in line for the presidency, is sending shockwaves across Washington. NBC's Blaine Alexander joins us from there now. A major cabinet shakeup. President Trump has fired his Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. The news breaking just hours after Tillerson returned from a tour of Africa. Rex and I have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, we we got along actually quite well. 
but we disagreed on things. But today's news reportedly catching Tillerson off guard, the president making the announcement on Twitter. A State Department official saying in a statement, Tillerson did not speak to the president this morning and is unaware of the reason he was let go, adding Tillerson had every intention of remaining on the job. I think Rex will be much happier now, but I really appreciate his service. The move comes after months of reported tension. NBC News reporting last summer, a frustrated Tillerson called the president a moron. On Capitol Hill today, lawmakers surprised by the news. I think it would help us get more things done if, uh, if there weren't so many distractions. At some level, this revolving door, the reshuffling, the constant change indicates a lack of stability and consistency that breeds chaos. Now tapped to take his place, CIA Director Mike Pompeo. President Trump telling reporters with this change, he is close to getting the cabinet he wants. And now with Mike Pompeo headed over to the State Department, President Trump has tapped Gina Haspel to lead the CIA. She's currently the deputy director and has been there for more than 30 years and would be the first woman to ever hold that post. Blaine Alexander, NBC News, Washington. Blaine, thank you. Belleville High School here at home is closed today because there was a threat made against the school, something called into 911. The district is asking anyone with information to call police. They also say that the person who made that threat will be prosecuted once caught. All other Van Buren schools remained open for classes today. A man from Shelby Township is accused of making threats to shoot up a local mall. Police arrested him, 20-year-old Tyler Tyndall, after receiving multiple tips that Tyndall was planning to attack Lakeside Mall in Sterling Heights. He's due back in court on March 26th. Palmer Park Preparatory Academy in Detroit remains closed today while cleanup crews check the building for possible mold contamination. The district says that it is moving to relocate classrooms because of water damage to the school. Crews are also checking for possible mold and plan to clean it all up. The school superintendent is meeting with school staff today to discuss how to how the school can move forward and continue classes. And efforts are expected to continue today to remove hazardous chemicals and literally clear the air at a strip mall in the village of Franklin. The MDEQ found a storage tank of dry cleaning solvent at the Franklin Village Plaza underneath it with fumes potentially posing a health hazard. So the shops in that plaza have been closed for days while efforts continue to safely remove the chemical and then test for safety of the air. Heartache for prospective parents as tragedy strikes another major fertility clinic. It's my worst fear realized. Um, I, it, it's, it is a nightmare. Where thousands of frozen eggs and embryos may be lost. Plus, terror in Texas after two people are killed and two others wounded by a serial bomber, leaving bombs and boxes on families' porches. Meanwhile, New England is bracing for impact as another massive snowstorm closes in. It's actually the third nor'easter in just 10 days. Also ahead, the woman who claimed that massive Powerball jackpot winning something just as important to her in court. We'll be right back. If you Welcome back, everybody. Turning now to some stories making big headlines all across the U.S. and across the world. And we do begin with what's happening down in Texas. Federal agents have joined local police in Austin, Texas, as the intensity is growing in the investigation into a series of three bombings in the past two weeks that have taken the lives of two people and wounded two others. Now, the bombs were packaged in boxes and left on the front doorsteps of homes in, he in Austin. Austin's police chief says the case is similar to the Unabomber who killed three people and injured nearly two dozen others in a nationwide bombing spree over 17 years. Now the chief is determined to track down the bomber. And we're not going to stop. We're going to go all out with our federal partners, our local partners, and we won't rest until we've identified the suspect and taken him into custody. Although police do not believe it's connected, there is heightened concern there in Austin, Texas, because the city is filled with visitors for the annual South by Southwest Music Festival. 
Meanwhile, continuing developments today, and this is the mysterious attempted assassinations of a former Russian double agent. The British government continues to claim that Russia was behind the poisoning, and British Prime Minister Theresa May has given Russia until midnight, that is 8 p.m. Detroit time, to explain the role, or Britain will, quote, retaliate. The former spy and his daughter remain in critical condition. And over to the Northeast, where they are bracing for impact again. The New England state's getting ready for another monster storm. It is the third nor'easter in just 10 days, Brandon, and it has been debilitating for folks that live on the eastern seaboard there. They get used to one or two maybe the entire winter, but as you said, three in 10 days. And uh, we have millions of people now directly in the crosshairs of this storm, Rhonda, as snow and flooding from storm surge and rain pummels the East Coast. Right now, Massachusetts already feeling the brunt of it. Powerful snowstorms completely blanketing some parts of Boston with powerful winds sending large waves uh, on shore there and rocking boats along the shoreline. The biggest danger could be ahead. Nearly impossible driving conditions at the wrong time. People are traveling in and out for spring break. Oh, what a mess. And hopefully, of course, that's not headed our way. We are getting snow, but not that much. So no complaining around here. Meanwhile, outrage and heartbreak as an embryo storage facility experiences a technical failure resulting in the loss of thousands of eggs and embryos. And a class action suit filed Monday alleges alarms did go off when the tank became too warm on Saturday night, but nobody was at that clinic to answer those alarms. One of the plaintiffs, Caitlin Gerbach, had tumors on her ovaries in her 20s, so she was relying on that clinic for her future. It was my future. It was all, you know, hopes and, and dreams that I that I had for the rest of my life were based around being a mom. And now that's, you know, been been taken from me. So devastating for these couples and individuals. The lab today is issuing an apology to all of its heartbroken patients. We are so very, very sorry. Um, we, again, um, want to do all that we can to support them. Support that for thousands of prospective parents will never compare to what they've lost. Meanwhile, let's turn our attention to New Hampshire and this lawsuit over the Powerball winner. She has won again. This time she won the right to privacy. A judge ruled in her favor on Monday that the woman who won a jackpot in January worth nearly $560 million can keep her identity private, even though she put her name on the back of the ticket. The judge says that the woman was able to prove in court that her privacy interest outweighs the public's interest in disclosing her name. So good for her. It could be something for the future. And still ahead, hmm, a great view, tasty food. It's all for Tasty Tuesday today. It's a family family restaurant serving up the freshest food from land and sea right along the Clinton River. That's Brandon's Tasty Tuesday feature and it was surely tasty this morning, Brandon. Oh, uh, it's a good one. Just a couple of weeks away from boating weather. I don't know if that's true, but I just trying to set the stage here. We are not out of the woods. We have winter weather advisories for parts of our viewing area for several inches of snow. We're talking snow bursts, snow squalls, but we're warming up too in the seven day. The Metri family, very well known as a team of legal eagles in Metro Detroit, but one family member broke free and runs a restaurant on a river, and it's really, really good. First thing we get from a first timer is, wow, I never knew the views you had here. Here is on the Clinton River with eight boat slips by car, bike, or boat. You're gonna wanna cruise in. We're cruise in. C-R-E-W-S, so it's your boat crew because we're right on the water. Right on the menu, too. It's something you'll want to peruse in. We've got burgers, we've got fish sandwiches, we've got fish and chips, but we also do prime rib three nights a week. Seafood is fresh and featured in every category, starting with the cruise in calamari. We don't use the rings. We get this calamari steaks in. We, flash, we, we slice that real thin. We flash fry that with some garlic and with some banana peppers. Owner Jeff Metry says on boat or jet ski, 
Tzatziki. We have uh, jumbo sized shrimp, both coconut style as well as fried shrimp and shrimp cocktail. The cruise in kitchen creates special sandwiches like the Digger Odell and the cruise Reuben. Reuben sandwich as well. We also cook that corned beef in house. We get that from Wiggly's local product. Prime rib. We have prime rib Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Slow cooked in house also fills a cruise in classic sandwich. We're cooking that prime rib here and then we're shaving it down for the Philly steaks. Metri puts a local perch portion o plenty prepared. We can do a deep fried perch dinner for you or we can do it LaBelle style, which is sauteed perch and then that gets tomatoes and capers and garlic sauteed over the top of it. The outdoor deck takes cruise in to another level. We got a great tiki bar outside and we get live entertainment in here and, and we have a lot of fun. That's a really, really special place and those in the neighborhood know it, but they are offering free calamari at Cruise Inn. You have to mention Tasty Tuesday and the restaurant located on North River Road in Harrison Township is open until 9 p.m. Calamari free with your order. Weather wise, you know, not the greatest day on the river, uh, not on the lakes either because they are not nearly uh, as they would need to be for snowmobiling, ice fishing, any of that. So we're getting teased with winter without really having a winter wonderland. Uh, winter weather advisory for Sanilac and St. Clair counties until 8 p.m. What could be two to four, even discussion of two to five inches, especially closer to to the lakeshore up north. 2 to 8 p.m. should be when more of those snow bursts and snow bands move a little bit closer to downtown Detroit or overspreading the area. Very slippery on the streets, low visibility. Watch out, especially bridges, overpasses, and ramps because they get extra slippery. Middle 30s, breezy, so it feels much cooler. And again, those heavier snow bands really can be crippling uh, while you're out driving and bad timing during the evening drive. Snow ends overnight, 21 degrees or so for a low temperature early Wednesday. And here is a look at what we were talking about. Some of these darker blues here just kind of piling up right there uh, along the lake shore, Sanilac County moving toward Port Huron. We don't see a whole lot of activity elsewhere. Our snowmaker stalled out because of the nor'easter we talked so much about and you can see still dealing with heavy snow pounding the Boston area uh, and again that means we're just slow to get this out of here. It's cut off from that system uh, out to our east. But you see some of those heavier snow bands out there for the afternoon and early evening. Watch out tomorrow, upper 30s, near 40, a nice mix of sun and some clouds. Uh, Thursday morning, Rhonda, we may get a snow shower too early, but most of the day is dry, looking nice into the weekend. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Brandon. Taking recycling to a whole new level instead of heading to the scrapyard, this Cold War area era military plane has a new purpose. Why you might need a reservation to check it out. All, 106. All right, everybody, listen to this. Airline food has never been so literal. A piece of aviation history is going, being repurposed in Ohio this week. It's going to become Cleveland's newest restaurant and may certainly be worth the road trip. Over 800 hours have been put into restoring this 1953 Boeing warplane into a one of a kind diner. Wow, this week the managers of the future restaurant are showcasing the progress made on restoring the plane. They hope to be fully licensed and operational by late 2019. How cool is that? That's awesome. It, you know, and if the food isn't that great, you go to the seat in front of you and you get the bag.